Welcome to a code report solution video. In this video, we're going to be covering the solution to problem three from the leak code contest number 109 entitled shortest bridge. The problem states in a given 2D binary array A, there are two islands. An island is a four directionally connected group of ones not connected to any other ones. Now we may change zeros to ones so as to connect the two islands together to form one island. Return the smallest number of zeros that must be flipped and it's guaranteed that the answer is at least one. And the constraints for our problem are that the dimension of our 2D grid will be between one and 100, and all of the values of the cells in our 2D grid will be either zero or one, which is why they're calling it a 2D binary array. Uh, so let's take a look at the examples that LeetCode provided us with. So they gave us three, and I've tried to format them so it's a little bit easier to see what the uh, island looks like, but uh, here it is visualized for the first one. So the green represents the two islands, and the blue represents sort of the sea in between the islands. So note that the islands are only connected uh, by the four directions, up, down, left, and right. So these two aren't connected, even though they share sort of like a corner. And so it's pretty clear here that you only need to fill in one of these squares in order to connect the two. If we take a look at our second example, here are our two islands, and it's clear that you only need to uh, fill in two squares here. So either these two, these two, or these two to connect them. So that's why we have our output equal to two here. And then for our final example, we have uh, one island that's sort of nested inside another island. And it's pretty clear that if we fill in any one of these uh, cells here that we will merge the two islands together, which is why the output and the answer is one. So let's take a look at a less uh, sort of trivial example and see how we can solve this. So here is the island that we're going to look at in terms of walking through a solution for this problem. And the first thing that we need to note is that in order to calculate the minimum distance between the two islands, uh, the brute force way that we can do this, which will work, is just by comparing each one of the points or squares in each one of the islands to uh, each one of the squares in the other islands and calculating the distance between the two. So this would be quadratic uh, based, or, or not quadratic, A times B, based on the number of elements in our first island versus our second island. And if we plug it into this formula here, we'll be able to calculate the distance between those two squares. So that's the first part of the problem. The second part of the problem is just figuring out how we can collect these points in our islands. And the way we can do that is just by using a flood fill. So what we'll do is we are going to loop through all of the points in our 2D grid, and we'll check to see uh, if each of the elements has a value one. And if we know it has a value one, that means it's a part of one of the islands, and we can start our flood fill to discover all of the uh, points in our island. And we can use a data structure, a set of pairs, to basically store all the points in each of our islands. And then we just need two islands. So we'll call one A and one B. And so while we're, while we're looping through this, they'll both be empty. And then when we stumble across our first element that has a value one, we'll start populating uh, our first island A. And then we'll finish our flood fill. And we know that these two islands are guaranteed to be separate. Otherwise, they'd be one island. So we'll finish our first flood fill, then we'll continue looping through and checking that uh, if it ha our element in our grid has a value of one, but it's not in uh, the first island that we found, then we know we found our second island and then we can perform a second flood fill to fill the values in B. So what this will look like is uh, we're gonna turn this to sort of a gray and black scale so that we can tell what has been explored and what hasn't been explored. And we're gonna start in our top left-hand corner. And so red will represent the current element that we're looking at. And we're just checking at this point in time, uh, does the value of our element, does it equal one? And uh, we're just gonna loop through nested for loop all of the elements until we find one of these. So at this point, we're not doing our flood fill. We're just uh, looping through nested for loop and trying to find a single square that has a value of one. So we're gonna continue to do this until we hit uh, this here. And at that point, uh, we found this element has a value of one. And uh, previously, right before we hit this, A was empty. So we're entering our first flood fill 
passing in by reference our island A, and then we're going to perform the flood fill by checking up, uh, down, left, and right. And as long as we are able to find uh, other elements that have values of one, we're going to continue to do this flood fill. So uh, the flood fill will end up like this, and we'll have three pairs in our set that represent our island A. And once we finish this, then we're going to go back to our nested for loop, which is going to be at this element, and we're going to continue to check. So even though this element has a value of 1, it's in our island A. So we know that it's not going to be an island B, so we're just going to move past it. Same thing here. This point is in our island A. And then we can continue to move uh, to our next row here. So here we're just back in our nested for loop, and at this point we hit our second island. So this element has a value of 1, and it's not in our first set of pairs. So at this point we enter our second flood fill, uh, fill the points in our island B, and uh, at this point we're sort of done, and you can either break out of your nested for loop or continue to do it. Um, both will work in terms of the solution, and you end up with this. So now we have uh, two data structures, A and B, that represent all of the points in each of our islands, and now we can just plug uh, this formula in here and note that the two elements are uh, this one here, 1, 1, and this one here, 3, 0. So when we plug that in, we end up with 3 minus 1, uh, plus 0 minus 1 uh, absolute values, which is going to give us 2 plus 1 because it actually includes one of the points. So we have to make sure to subtract 1 in our distance formula here, and we're good to go. So that's really the whole algorithm. It's a pretty neat problem. I always enjoy uh, implementing flood fills because I think it's a, a neat algorithm. And yeah, so let's take a look at our code. So here is our C++ solution. Uh, we can see our function shortest bridge takes a two-dimensional vector, which we're calling g for grid, and returns an integer, which is going to be the uh, minimum number of squares or elements that we need to fill in to connect the two islands. And note that VVI here stands for vector of vector of integers, and island, which is right below it, stands for a set of pair of two integers. And we have our macros as usual. So uh, we have our n uh, declared in the solution class outside so that we don't need to pass it in to other functions. Um, and we're just setting that equal to be the dimension of our 2D grid. And then we have our two islands, our set of pairs a and b declared here. And our first piece of code here, our nested for loop, is uh, looping through each of the elements. If it has a 0 of 1, we just skip over it. And so we're trying to find an element that has a value of 1. And uh, once we have found one of these elements, we're going to check, have we filled island A yet? If not, perform flood fill and pass in our island, as well as the grid and the starting coordinates for our flood fill. Else, if we've already filled A, um, then we need to check that B is still empty to make sure that we're not already sort of refilling B, and that the current element that we're at wasn't already discovered to be a part of um, the first island A. And if we meet those two conditions, we can flood fill, pass in B, and perform the same one. So we'll take a look at our flood fill algorithm in a second. And once we've done that, uh, we just need to initialize our answer. You can initialize it to two times uh, n, which we know is going to be the worst case, because uh, that's just basically the width plus the height. And then we have a nested for loop where basically we calculate the distance uh, between every single one of the pairs in A and B. And note that this distance formula uh, is simply this. So absolute value of the firsts, a difference of the firsts and the difference of the seconds, minus 1. And then once we've calculated this, we just return our answer. So let's quickly take a look at our flood fill function. So uh, here's some boilerplate that you need, the delta x and the delta y, when you're sort of exploring recursively. Um, and then we have this is valid function that takes two coordinates and it's just making sure that we're not exploring outside of our 2D grid. And so for each call to our flood fill, we're going to insert uh, the pair of coordinates into our island that we're currently flood filling. And then we have a nest, uh, a for loop that's going to iterate four times over the deltas. We're going to calculate the new coordinates that we're trying to explore to. If those are valid coordinates and if the next element also has a value of 1 and it hasn't already been explored, then continue to flood fill in this direction. And once we've finished this flood fill recursively, we will have explored all of the elements in our island.
And so the last thing to talk about is the time complexity, which uh, if we refer back to our old piece of code is gonna be n squared plus a times b. So n squared for uh, recursing or exploring uh, our nested for loop to then flood fill, and then a plus b to calculate the distances. And a and b are bounded by uh, the number of points or squares in our 2D grid, which for each of them can be up to n squared. So this is technically n squared plus n squared times n squared, which is obviously n to the fourth. But the constraints on this problem, if you remember, were that the dimension of our grid was going to be bounded by 100. So this will still be OK. As always, if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, hit that like button. If you want to see more, make sure to hit that subscribe button. You can follow me on Twitter for reminders 30 minutes before contests start, and you can find all of the code shown in my videos on my GitHub page. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.